I'm Michael Forrester. I'm here with Code Cloud, and I'm here talking with Brett Fisher. And we're going to explore a variety of different topics. So tell us why you're excited about CI/CD and Argo and GitHub Actions and all those other pieces. Yeah, Docker solved the base artifact that we need to deploy all of our apps with, right? Like that we've standardized on that. We're starting to see Kubernetes API is the data center API. It's the standard of that. But we have this messy parts in the middle, right? So you you've made your code commit, and then every company is different for a thousand different things they do. But before that hits a server and starts, and so it's it's. The advantages of a lot of these CNCF projects, one of the big advantages is I can hire other engineers and we're all speaking the same languages. Like we, we all know Docker, we all know a ba at least the basics of Kubernetes. And so we can start having conversations and you didn't completely write everything from scratch in Bash or your favorite language. Right. And it, I don't have to relearn it all, right? So I can move teams, I can move companies. And that, that middle, for the longest time, Jenkins was the killer. And I still think they're number one technically in the world in terms of utilization. Yes. I think they've had their time, their moment has passed. They're, they've got lots of new projects that we've actually had on my show. And I'm excited about GitHub Actions just because I feel like GitHub Actions is going to be, I'm predicting in the next year or two, it will be the number one CI in the world. The velocity of everyone using it, the marketplace is killer. That's their key feature is everyone's putting their actions there. So if you want to do a Docker build, you use the Docker's official GitHub action. If you want to do a Trivi scan with CVEs, right. you do the, use their official GitHub action. And so I think that in the CI space, what I, I think is going to happen is all the other players are going to have to adopt GitHub actions as their sort of standard format for how you automate all your tooling right. instead of us all bash scripting everything like we used to do. So I'm excited about that because again, it's like standardization, it, it increases velocity. And the teams that I've worked with that have taken on GitHub Actions, a lot of them don't even have just one CI. Like they've got multiple, they've got Jenkins, they got Drone, they got Circle CI, they've got all these things. But as this integrator, it's supporting them all. It, and it will, and it, what I noticed is the uptake on Git, because we're all in GitHub anyway. Right. The GitHub Action uptake on the teams that we give it to, instead of it being that one person, that knows the Jenkins script or that one person who knows the pipeline format, people adopt that GitHub Actions and they're already using it in their personal stuff. So now they're using it at work. It's the same thing in both places. It's, there's a lot of it you get for free. If you run your own runners, it's all free. And the format is, it's okay, it's YAML. It's not perfect, it's not always the best thing, but I have, I love it, I teach it. And that next step goes to deployment which you can do in GitHub Actions, but Argo, we talked about like the GitOps movement, right. right? And I am a firm believer that GitOps is the pattern, doesn't answer every problem for deployments. It has rough edges when you start talking about things outside of Kubernetes and things that are stateful. But the idea that I can walk into a shop and if they're using GitOps and if that they know and they understand that there's four principles to GitOps, it's not just infrastructure as code, there's extra other things go to learn open gitops.dev, or I think that's what it is. There's a standard that the industry is trying to come around and you can adopt one of a half a dozen or more tools. And then we all are doing essentially the same thing. Operating around those four yes. principles. Yeah, we're like, we're using pull requests. We're using Git as the storage. We, the tool is living in the infrastructure and it's doing reconciliation. Mm. So if something changes, it's fixing it in, the, in that reconciliation loop. And that standard is really exciting to me because we don't really have that. Today, everyone deploys a different way. Some people bash script, kube control apply. Other right. people have custom unique tools that come from a particular cloud. It doesn't work across all clouds. So I'm excited about the GitOps, the CI and GitOps. That's my thing. Excellent, excellent. And that solves a lot of the consistency problem, right? We yeah. defined a state yeah. and the state's not matching. And then right. who's going to be the authority that switches what? Yeah. Yeah, it's right. very flexible too. If you want it to focus on images or you, it can watch for new images. If you want to focus on the Git repo getting a new commit merged in, it can monitor that. Some of the tools now can even monitor your whole org for every repo. And if there's a specific file in the repo, you can actually give it a pattern. So you, your developers, in order to adopt GitOps deployment models, they don't really only have to do anything but put a file in the, like, the repo with their Helm chart or the repo with their customize or whatever YAML they're using for Kubernetes. And it will automatically pick up the repo, the, the file, it's called application sets and Argo CD hot take, check out application sets. It's a pretty new feature, it's banging. So it'll just scan the GitHub API for all your org repos, pick up the ones that have this file, and then that file will have the information like which cluster to put it on, 
you know, which branch I want to put on. Do I do tags? Do I do branch? Based on your organization standards. And that to me is like, let's get all this crap out of the way. Let's get back to the, the job of developing in our apps, not managing all these infrastructures. And if you're a developer and you're writing front end code, back end code, whatever, my goal for you is that beyond your code commit, the most you ever have to deal with for deployment is one pull request to accept. The pull request was automatically created by robots. It knows where it needs to go in the infrastructure and you at most have one PR. So that's like the human gate. And then you could always take that and fully automate it. But a lot of teams I walk into, they have, suddenly there's five PRs they have to make in order to get their change into, into production. Right. And that's a lot, like that's a lot of work. And then that's when people are just like, I hate, I hate DevOps, I hate GitOps, I hate YAML because they have all these PRs they got to do. And especially probably because most of those PRs are probably the same from release to release. Yeah, they're, they're just changing, really changing a line. Yeah. They're changing a line. They're yeah. changing a tag, and and automate all that. Like figure that out. Um, I have a bunch of open source stuff on my GitHub profile. So Brett Fisher on GitHub, and I have a bunch of open source examples on how to use Argo and how to use GitHub Actions to automate a lot of this stuff, plus videos. Like, I got some videos on there too, so. Excellent, that's great. Yeah. Do you think that the introduction of a web assembly has potentially the next layer of abstraction will change any of that from a GitOps perspective? Maybe. I think Wasm right now is really early. We just had Nigel on our live stream actually an hour ago, and Nigel's actually a smarter, he's paying more attention to it than I am. Nigel Poulton, great guy, yeah. Docker captain, and does all the things books, videos, courses, and he's paying attention to the WASM stuff from an infrastructure perspective, from a DevOps perspective. Yes. And he's not writing code in WASM. He's like, how do I deploy and manage it? And right. we're still, it's exciting, but it's still really early days. So like we want it to be, we, we want it, it's gotta be able to deploy fast. That's the whole thing with WASM is like, we, we can spin these things up really fast. There's very short start cycles. And so there's probably some more stuff that needs to be done in Kubernetes to make that transparent and easy. My goal for operators and DevOps people is that someone comes to you and says, hey, I'm a Python person or a Node person or a Ruby person or a Go or a Rust, and I've compiled to Wasm because I want certain, like I want the security boundary, I want the performance, yes. whatever their reason is. And I can just deploy that on my infrastructure without having to make new clusters on a bespoke design. I don't want to do anything different. It's just another artifact. I just want to deploy it. eBPF's the same way. There's a new project called Inspector Gadget with a K. That's a great name. It's by Microsoft. And they're trying to standardize eBPF tools that maybe need more permissions of what Kubernetes can give them. And because they're talking directly to the kernel and their deployment is sometimes outside of Kubernetes. And we don't like that, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. want to buy more bash scripts. I don't want to go back to Chef or Puppet. So they're trying to standardize a format around, we're using the image artifact to deploy these tools with their eBPF features and hooks but we're using our same methodologies of GitOps and right. DevOps to do that. So that's not there yet. Like we're not fully baked. We probably need a couple of years, but okay. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. That's a really long answer to I'm excited. Yeah, and you're excited and it's early days. Yeah, it's early. Like you're not gonna be doing this stuff today. Unless you're writing all your own tools, you're not gonna be able to just easily make all this work. But keep an eye on it. But yeah, it's, it's a little plug and play. It's not plug and play. It's, it's a little bit hacky and there's edge cases and just in Wasm in general, like, the challenges with Wasm of getting network and disk access and HTTP connections, and that's all not automatic. I mean, Multi-threading, they're just cases. Right, they and, have And WebAssembly, yeah. 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 So we're getting there. It'll be, it'll be you'll know about it. Watch <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> so if someone wants to stay connected with you, obviously you mentioned your you know, GitHub account, your presence there, but any other platforms where people can stay connected with you and find out more information about yeah. what you're talking about? YouTube, look up my name on YouTube. But just look up my name, love Kubernetes. YouTube, podcasting, it's all branded my name. So you'll, you, there's no, Fine. I don't have a cool name like Code Cloud. So I just go by <laughs> me.